adding structure elevations to a DEM. Today we're going to take a look at adding building and structure elevation data to an existing ground truth DEM or raster file. So as you can see here, I have this ground truth DEM and we have buildings in a shape file that are all have a corresponding elevation. And so the goal is to add these elevations into this DEM. Determining raster cell size. So one thing we're going to want to do early on is to determine what size our raster is. So we're going to open up the properties. We're going to drop down raster information and we're going to determine the cell size. So this says a cell size of 2.5 feet. And that's important because as we're doing more raster calculations, we don't want our DEM to get more coarse by choosing arbitrarily larger cell size. We want it to be remain defined. Preparing structure shapefile for raster conversion. So if we go to our planner matrix shapefile and right click on it and open up the attribute table, we'll hit the add fills button. As you can see, if we want to add another fill, we'll, we'll enter the fill name, the alias, and we'll click the type. You can see I've created an elevation fill already and I click double for this fill. So then we'll X out. And if you're here, you'll want to save the new fill that you created. It's converting shapefile to raster. So from here, we can go to analysis tools. And we'll search polygon and raster. Once we find it, we can click on it. So we're going to enter our shape files. You see planar metrics, 2016 prints. We'll look at the value field next. The value field is what we created earlier. And so you'll see me drop down and select the elevation field. One thing, quick thing to note, remember that pesky cell size. So we want to change this to 2.5. After that, we're free to run. Adding empty spaces to structure raster. So now we're going to start out. And we have another shape file, but it's actually a raster. All the buildings will have an elevation of 10, just like we decided. We'll notice that there are gaps, however, in our building raster. That is because if, if things were outside of the building structures, there was no elevation to put in. This can be a problem for further analysis. So what we're going to have to do, we're going to have to make this raster continuous. If the raster surface is within one of the building buildings, then there will be an elevation of 10. But if it's outside, the elevation value will be zero. We'll use the raster calculator to perform this. So go back to analysis, go to tools. Then we'll type in raster calculator. Once we find it, we can click it. So, we'll type in the expression, con is null. We'll go to the raster layer that we're working on. We'll click it. Close the parentheses. Zero. No, say 10, and we'll close the parentheses again. So what we're doing is we're saying, make this raster continuous. If the area is zero, meaning if there's no building there, we'll put a zero for the elevation. If it's not no, we'll put a 10. If there are more elevations than just 10, then we could put the polygon raster three tiff in again. So that means if it's a variable of zero, then we put a zero. But if not, if there's an elevation already in there, then we'll put the value that's currently in the tiff. So this makes the raster continuous. So once we have that in, we'll hit run. Performing raster addition. So we can see 
we have a new raster. What we have here is we have zero in magenta and 10 in light green. So all the buildings are in light green and the empty spaces are in magenta. Looks like our tool worked. So now we'll use this raster. We'll add this to our original DEM to add the 10 feet building height and zero heights from for the empty spaces on top of our original raster. So we'll go back to the raster calculator again. A simpler function, we'll select our original ground truth tip and we'll add our building raster. So again, this is our ground truth tip and our new raster with the value of zero or 10. Once we have that in, and we have it go into the correct folder. Then we're able to hit run. Again, just a reminder, we should use the .tiff file extension. Remember that our default will put you into a geo database, but it's better off if you save it to a folder, in my experience. Again, TIFF file format is what we're looking at for. Then you're free to hit run. Final output. Once we have our finalized raster, we can check it. So we can see our building shape file is above our finalized product. So I'm showing you guys that the building elevations have indeed been added to the raster. So you can see the outprint. There we go. We can see some buildings there. Let's pan over to the side to get a better example. There we go. We can see that the elevation of the buildings were added to the raster, saying that our process, our workflow was successful. Now, if we look at the original, you can see that the building elevations are not there. There we go. Quick tip when you're using a raster calculator. If you're noticing that your finalized raster is more coarse, you can check your environments tab. Cell size, you can set it to the minimum the minimum of all the inputs. This should keep the raster you created down to a, a very resolute, as resolute as the minimal products that you're using. This depends on what you're doing. Again, we, we talked about it previously in the video. The 2.5 cell size is also important. But if you were to manipulate it through the environments, then that can help you keep the new created raster to 2.5 feet as well by selecting the minimum. Thank you.